We have JT Daniels here. He's going to make a couple of quick remarks, and then we'll go straight to questions. What's up, y'all? Uh, just happy to be here. And, you know, I know a lot of y'all come a long way to do this, too, so uh, thank you all for being here. Okay, we'll go right here on the... Okay, third, uh, third row. JT, do you feel like you're the best quarterback in the SEC coming back? Um, it's something I don't really uh, think about, uh, if I had to say honestly. Um, I think there's a lot of great quarterbacks, a lot of great players in the SEC. Um, you know, I, I, it's probably one of the first things I learned since I got here is like, I, I don't care if you're a third stringer in the SEC. If you're if you're playing football in this in this conference, you're a really good player. Um, I, I don't I haven't taken the time to compare myself to uh, you know other guys, and I think it's honestly I think it's too difficult to you know if you're not on that team and you don't know their system and their scheme, you don't really know how good that quarterback is or how good their receiver is, you know. JT to your left, third row. Coach Smart was just saying that you're a big time film guy in the off season. Have you had a chance to break down Clemson's defense a little bit? And what does a game of that magnitude do during fall camp to kind of get you guys focused and ready, knowing that you're getting ready to face a top five team right out of the gate? Um, so you definitely do, you know, I've been looking at it. Um, I'll be looking at it specifically when that time comes. I'd follow it strict schedule um, for a lot of reasons. But um, in terms of that game being as big as it is, like, yeah, it's a national TV game. It's a 730 kickoff. It's a, it's a big deal. But um, I think it's important for us to, as good as Clemson is, to not look at them as any different from any other opponent. You know, it's at the end of the day, we're going there, we're playing football. That's what we do. Um, and there's a lot of really talented, really good football players. I think they have a great coaching staff. Uh, they have a strong schemes on both sides of the ball, but uh, football is football, and we got to go out and play our game like we would against any other team that we'll play for the rest of the season after that. Front row to your right. JT, when you, when you look ahead to 2021, how exciting is it knowing that you know, it'll be more of a normal season playing in front of full stadiums again in the SEC as a, you know, opposed to last year where you were, you know, quarter full most of the time? Yeah, that's, a, uh, that's a, probably what I'm most excited for, honestly. Um, I've never experienced a dog walk, and they said like 30,000 people go there. Like, I've never seen that before. Um, I think the closest was like when we played away at Texas my freshman year. Like, you know, that was pretty packed. Um, but I'd n I've never, you know, played in the environment where it's like just, it, like, it was ridiculous last year for me to see even at 25%, like, when the fourth quarter hits and we do all the red lights and all that stuff. Like, people go crazy at those games. It's awesome to see. Um, and I haven't got to see it full capacity yet, so I can't wait. OK, we have it for 10 minutes. Any questions? We have a starting quarterback here. OK, on your right second row. What, what have you seen from a young guy behind you, Carson Beck? He's from Jacksonville, mm -hmm. Florida, and he's heading into that second year. Have you seen some progress from him? Uh, a lot, yeah. He's a very good player um, and a really good person, too. Uh, you can say the same thing for really everyone in that quarterback room. Um, from what I've got here to where Carson is now, there's, tr there's tremendous improvement. And he's, I mean, I, I personally think he's game ready. Like, you know, I, there's, uh, you know, from all of our, all of our uh, other quarterbacks, um, Stetson has a lot of game experience. You know, Brock's really good. Carson's really good. All of them can step in and play football. Um, so there's no, there's no concerns from the quarterback room of, you know, um, who's going to be ready and who needs to play. I think there's a lot of guys, and Carson especially, that are, you know, ready to play ball. To your left on the fourth row. JT, in the other room, Coach Smart was just talking about your relationship with Todd Munkin. How did that come together so quickly, and what do you like so far about him? Uh, we just both see the game really similar, I'd say. Uh, you know, I think met him, or the, like the first time I talked to him was on Zooms for like two months, or like a month and a half, until I actually went to Georgia. Um, they talked to me as soon as I hit the portal, and then Monk and I just had, you know, I, like I wasn't doing anything at home, he wasn't doing anything at home. Uh, so we, he took me through a bunch of the offense, and you know, what, what they were doing schematically, and we just see the game very similar. To your left on the third row. JT, you said uh, you have a routine that you keep pretty strict. Are you, so you're watching film at home or in the bed, it's iPad. How, how does this work? How does that walk me through that? Uh, you want like the specific schedule or just where I do it? How, how you do it, yeah. Uh, 
in the quarterback room. Uh, like we have a quarterback room that's like damn near the quarterback player's office at this point. Like Munkin uses his the staff room at his office um, more times than not. So like we pretty much have a quarterback war room, I guess. That is uh, like Sunday I watched three most recent games against similar offense. Monday, I mean, there, there's a bunch that goes into the the weekly process. But uh, in the quarterback room, we have the whole film server up there. Front row here. <clears throat> you know, JT, you haven't had a chance to, you know, personally compete or play for an SEC title yet, but, you know, it's something that, you know, the program George has kind of been accustomed to recently. So um, is that kind of your, your, uh, your goal, your mindset for this year? How motivated are you to, to you know, just compete for a title this year? Uh, I would definitely say it's a goal, um, and it's obviously something we want. You know, um, everybody wants to play for the conference championship and then the national championship. Like, everybody wants to do that. Um, but it's not our, it's not what we're focused on right now. Um, at the time, we're really focused on our core DNA and our values. And, you know, the, we, we put so much time into the mental structure of this team. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with where that's come. Uh, I, I think the biggest focus right now is just week by week, how are we preparing for August 1st? And when August 1st hits, it's how do we prepare for the end of camp? Then once the camp ends, it's how do we prefer, prepare for Clemson, then so on and so forth for the rest of the season after that, and we just take it week by week. Stay on the left side, in the back row, please. Hey, JT, talk a little bit about your weapons that you have around you. you. You lose Pickens, obviously, but through the portal you get Gilbert, and you also want to have your running game, too, because that helps you as well. Talk about balancing out your offense and using all the weapons that you have. Yeah. Um, the, um, as an offense, I think we have the, the best problem you can have, which is there's only one ball. Um, there's so many guys uh, that you just don't normally have on a roster where as an offense you have like pretty much every receiver. You have three deep at receiver that could all play and are both talented enough and mentally ready to where they could be in the game and it's no different than your ones. You have a good two, three deep at line. You have like six running backs that you can go in and play. Um, you have four quarterbacks that I would all trust to play. You have so many guys that are football ready that, um, you know, it's just, it's something to be said about how the coaching staff develops and how the guys here work. We'll go to your left, the fourth row. What do you think the potential of this offense is and what do you think its biggest strength is going to be this fall? Um, I'd say the biggest strength is the versatility you have. Uh, and I'd say how well we can do simple when we're at our best. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said about having a complex, you know, schematic approach. But uh, at our best, we do simple better than the people we're playing against. Uh, and that's the plan in, in terms of versatility, like, like I just was talking about. Uh, there's just so many guys that you can put in so many places uh, that can execute. Um, I'd say that's your biggest strengths from your offense. Second row on the left. JT, I don't know how much you've had time to work with Eric Gilbert, but what are your early impressions of him? Yeah, um, that's like the fifth time I've been asked that, and I'm, it's the same answer. Um, Eric is, there's a lot of guys that are really talented that like football, and there's a lot of guys, and there's you know a select few like Eric that are talented and love football. Um, he spends hours with the receiver and tight end coach. Uh, he asks me a bunch of questions. He takes the time to learn the signals, learn what he's got to do, uh, and really learn the game itself, and it's really impressive to see. Um, that someone that has what he has by birth, because he has a lot of people just beat by birth, um, and then he combines that with being a weekend worker, and he's a film watcher, and he likes to learn what he learns. You know, so there's, he's the best of both worlds in terms of your physical and your mental game. We have time for two questions. We'll go here on the second row, and then we'll end on the third row. JT, your first game of the season is against Clemson. Uh, how much of a Will that set the tone, I guess, of one game? Can that set the tone for the entire season when you go up against Clemson? Um, it, it really should not, uh, just being the fact that it is just one game. It's your week one game. Like, your week one game matters no matter who it's against. Um, and ours is against Clemson, like a really good top five guaranteed team. Um, a lot of talent on that team, a lot of talent on our team. Like, it's a big matchup, and there's going to be a lot of hype around it. Um, but I think it's really important for both teams' futures to keep perspective and matter that it's the week one game. Like you can 
lose your week one game and have a great season. You can win your week one game and have a terrible season. You know, neither really. Like it's, it's just it's just the week one game, the regular season. As as fun as it's going to be and as exciting as it is to compete against a really good team, it's the week one game. Final question on your left third row. Hey JT, so going into last season, you were recovering from a torn ACL. So. What was your mindset bouncing back from this injury, and how has this affected your mindset going into this season? Um, so it was difficult. Uh, I wasn't ready week one. I wasn't even cleared week one. Then after that, there was the whole process of you know playing on, getting as many reps as I could, whether that was through scout team or whatever it was, just to get reps to you know be healthy and game ready. Um, so there was a lot that I had to learn about myself about the process of like, you feel like you're ready mentally, but your knee's just not ready and it's just not working out for you at the time. Um, I think all that really did was, it, it was it was strong adversity, which I think was important for my personal development and uh, helping me put things in perspective. JT, thank you very much. Thank you.